Hi, I'm Sian Benz and welcome to The Naked Word, a show for the everyday woman where our story is your story. Today on The Naked Word, we're talking about something that I think every single woman in the world has experienced. That is conflict. Whether in the workplace or in family or in friendship, conflict is almost unavoidable. Now, admittedly, there are some women who love a good old fashioned knock down, drag out war of words, and that's okay. But for the rest of us, it can feel like we're losing the connection to the other person. So we need strategy. Today, we're going to explore the different ways in which people fight, uh, different reactions to fighting, how to also move from being reactive in an argument to being proactive. Joining me are Natalie, Deanna, and Soraya. Hey girls! Hi! Hi. <laughs> um, when we were putting this episode together, when we were sitting down and workshopping this, I loved everybody's different perspectives. It showed me how differently we all handle arguments. Mm. So Nat, um, yours probably shocked me the most. Tell me, how do you handle conflict? Now I handle it well, but when I had my first bout of conflict, my yeah. real first bout of conflict, I realised I didn't know how to deal with conflict at all. So tell me why. So I grew up in a household where I never ever saw my mum and dad fight. Yeah, right. I never saw a conflict. Mm. I never saw a resolution. I never saw a, a discussion. But what I did see was two people that used to take things away. So they would take things away to discuss them. Like to another room or something. Yeah, but I didn't know that that's what it was. Yeah. So when I first ever had a long-term partner and he raised his voice, I actually became a shell of myself. I, I couldn't think, I couldn't breathe. I went into a state of anxiety, I remember. Was that in the moment? In the moment. I remember from my fingers to my toes, I had hot sweats wow. and I felt violently ill and yeah. I did not know how yeah. to defend myself, yeah. protect myself. I didn't know to walk away. I didn't know what to do. So that was your first to reaction, to want to protect first, and defend? My first ever mm. reaction was just to go clammy. Yeah, and, wow. And I, I couldn't. I couldn't think through any process whatsoever. Yes. And when when he yelled at me, it wasn't probably that bad. Yeah. But for me, it felt like this is over. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because he's disappointed or angry yeah. or he's frustrated with me, this means I'm not perfect, so therefore he's going to walk away. And you had, no, you had no evidence that uh, otherwise either, right? No, yeah, because that's what you saw. No, it was so... Um, it was, it was so apparent to me that that is something I needed to learn, and yeah. I needed to learn quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I didn't understand relationships equaled conflict and resolution. Yeah. What I thought was really interesting is that you didn't realise that what you saw growing up became like the way that you handled conflict then? Then, yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is so different to Soraya. <laughs> <laughs> so Next. different. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, give, us, give us some insight. So like Matt, I've evolved into more of a peaceful sort of conflict style now. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how it's yeah. always been. Yeah. So it's been an evolution yeah. through my journey of navigating conflict. Um, so when I was younger, I was, I was actually quite just happy and yeah. doing whatever. I wasn't a conflict, conflicting sort of confronting type person. Or aggressive person. Yeah, yeah, until I was six years old and I got on a bus and um, I was sitting there and this little boy came on the bus and looked at me and said in a really aggressive tone, go home. And I was like, I am, I'm on the bus, I'm going home. I didn't know what he meant. Mm -hmm. And a continuum of that, me and my mum would walk down the road to go to the shops. And it was horrible because we'd just be walking hand in hand, beautiful day, mm. and this Tirana would drive by and throw a VB can at us oh, no. and scream out. And, and sorry, can I just clarify here that what you mean is that you were being racially yeah. uh, vilified? Yep. And in the area that we lived in back in the 80s and 90s, I think racism was quite prevalent back then. Yeah. So, and then going to school, it was the same thing. I went to Camp Scott High 
right. which was yeah. um, at the time, um, you know, minority groups were mm. minority mm. in the area. And so when I went to school, I started to get a lot of, you know, you gook, you nip, you Muslim B-I-T-C-H. Oh, yeah. And my mum would be attacked as well at Coles, at the shopping centre, so she taught us how to be, defend ourselves. Right. She knew that when my children and myself, being Asian, being Muslim, yeah. They have to learn how to defend themselves. So, so we learn how physically? to fight. So yeah, not wow. just physically, but to stick up for yourself. But she used to teach us how to have a strong voice so that we don't get bullied. Mm -hmm. But Sarah, how did that feel? I didn't, I didn't know what the threat was, but the only feeling that I had was being who I was was not OK yeah. and that you're under attack all the time. Yeah. And so I felt like I had to be always on the defence. Yeah. I had my back up all the time. Yeah. And when they used you know, the racial slurs and then also the Muslim. Yeah. It, it felt like I was different. I was an outcast. Mm. I wasn't accepted by society. And yeah. that the world, for me as a child, the world, besides my own people, as in mm. other people that were from different, you know, ethnicities and faiths, that we were not okay. Yeah. We weren't accepted. Yeah. And it was horrible. So every time I walked out. And in fact, you were attacked mm. yeah. for it. Yeah. That's, that was my experience. So yes. then I learned Taekwondo, became a state champion at nine years old. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And then growing older, I just... I Isn't got... that funny? Because, because your <laughs> yeah, early experience is like, right, yeah. I've got to defend, yeah. I've got to yeah. attack. I'm yeah. being attacked. And so you become a teenager and then you start doing Taekwondo. Yeah. And no one ever touched me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I used to get pushed at the bus stop. Yeah. And just, just standing there waiting for the bus, be pushed mm -hmm. and have some racial slur thrown at me. I pushed back. Yeah. And then the next day I went to school, those two same people would say hello to me. So I learnt that mm. defending yourself earns you respect. Yeah. So I, th throughout my life, did that. So then whenever someone was confrontational with me, the first thing I did was defend. Step in. Yeah. Can, I, can I just yeah, well. share an experience that I saw with you? Mm. Uh, we went out for dessert one night yeah. in Perth City. And we walked in, so we walked into the dessert place and she's wearing her headscarf, of course, and I'm in full African get-up. <laughs> um, so we're both just expressing, you know, who we are. Yeah. And as we walked in, immediately, I became aware of a gentleman inside that restaurant who immediately stared at Soraya. And, and I'll just call it for what it is. Her wearing the headscarf does attract attention. Mm -hmm. She's immediately noticed everywhere she goes. And, and I'm used to it, obviously, but this gentleman was staring at her and he would not look away. And I was walking behind her and all I saw her do was turn her head towards him and it appeared to me from the back mm -hmm. that she was maintaining his gaze. So I'm thinking she's staring him down, right? Mm -hmm. And so we order, we sit down and he's still staring. He's still looking yeah. at her. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And, and do you remember your reaction? Yeah. I was uncomfortable, but then I locked gaze with him and he was still staring and I couldn't quite make out whether it was yeah. aggressive or if it was friendly. Yeah. So we sat down and I noticed you were like just uncomfortable. Yeah. And then I just went, you know what, I'm going to smile at him. Yeah. And I smiled at him. Once I smiled at him, it was an awkward sort of half smile. Because yeah. I was like, mm, <laughs> yeah, it was. Was. what's his reaction going to be? Yeah. Yeah. But I just looked at him, smiled sort of halfway, but still sort of prepared. And then he turned around and he said, hello. And I went, oh, hi. And he goes, sorry, I was just staring at you because you were so beautiful. Yeah. Mm. And I went, oh, but because of my experience yes. growing up, mm. yes. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And so it's always sort of this, oh, how do I approach mm. this? So at times people have told me I look intimidating when I walk or when I talk. And I'm just like, oh, really? Because I don't feel that at all. Yes. And on the flip yeah. side of that, my reaction was, let's get ready to fight. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because when it comes to the people I love, yeah. when it comes to conflict, I'm all in. Mm. That's my style. Yeah. I'm all in. Huh. Yeah. Just when it comes to the people I love, yeah. that is it. If yeah. it's anybody else, I couldn't care less. Mm. Uh, D. Yes. Your experience. I, I, I really don't like conflict very much at yeah. all. I've had to practice my like ability to manage myself inside of conflict. Yeah. I, I get overwhelmed by um, 
energy coming at me, like aggression or like frustration or disappointment, yeah. when that's directed at me in any way that isn't, oh, listen, oh, this has happened okay. and let's talk yeah. about it. If there's any kind of like, rah! behind it, yeah. I get really overwhelmed really, really quickly and yeah, I get all no, like hot funny. and shivery, I can't think properly, yeah. I want to cry like yeah. immediately. Yeah. I feel like I'm five years old and I want to burst into tears. Yeah. I was a very good girl yeah, when right. I was young. Mm. Really, really good girl, wanted everyone to be happy with me all the time, did everything that I was supposed to do, mm. never went through teenage angsty stuff as a kid. Mum always tells everyone she was an amazing child. She was perfect. Right? She's a really, really yeah. good girl and I just, I don't think that's actually very functional or healthy and it certainly didn't work mm. as an adult because, because it's put me in this position where when I have, when I'm engaged in some sort of conflict, I find it incredibly incredibly upsetting that someone else is upset with me. So what happens then in, like, let's say you're in a relationship yeah. with, with an intimate partner? Because, yeah, let's, let's be fair, yeah. uh, conflict inside of marriages and relationships happen. Yes. Mm. So what happens for you then when there's something going on? Well, it's really funny because my first husband like not a conflict not, not a person that does yeah. conflict which was like so i got to have this whole kind of relationship where if there was conflict it was because i pushed it and generated yeah, right. it and okay. so i always felt very like in control in that yeah. space and i'm not with him anymore and yeah. my partner now who i've been with for a long time now yeah. He's all about conflict. He's happy yeah, to right. tell me exactly what he thinks the moment he thinks yeah, it. Right? Yeah. And so I've actually found myself in a situation now where I am very regularly challenged yeah. <laughs> in that way. Yeah. And it's yeah. actually really hard. And, and what's happened for me is I've become a real chaser. So when the conflict is there, I'm like, this must be resolved. I'm so uncomfortable okay. right now. Pause there for a second. So you just said a word that chaser. like piqued my... Yeah. My antennas went up, chaser. Yeah. So you're a chaser, so you actually continuously chase yes. after your yes. partner? Yes, yes. So he will come to me, he will go, this is no good, and we'll, we'll have a, or, or even if it starts gently, like, like maybe we're just having a conversation, yeah. but then emotions get like on top of us and we both get a bit like, like up yeah. and escalated and a bit shouty, right? And when that happens, he needs a break. I, I have someone who chases me in my intimate relationship where yeah. it's not so aggressive, but it's wanting to talk it out. That's or exactly what it is. Yeah, follow me. Yeah. But the way that it's being delivered, because he's so passionate, yeah. right? It comes across, for me, it's like, oh, it's too much. So I'll try and run. That's what it's like right? for my partner as but well. But the more I run, the more chase there is. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned how to just sort of lean in which helped a little bit. Oh, look, I think leaning in had helped me enormously. <laughs> 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 They're going to help everyone. I'm going to lean in instead of lean out. Because that's what so interesting. Yeah. Because I would imagine, like, that's not quite the dynamic in my relationship, but I would imagine that when one person is doing the chasing and the other person is doing the running, mm. that the feeling of the person chasing you feels... Needy. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it is needy. Yeah. It absolutely does come yeah. from a need. Yeah. It comes from a need to not have this gaping chasm between us, yeah. right? Because what happens is when when the conflict happens and I feel like there's a break yeah. because I'm really upset about someone being upset with me. So when he's upset with me, it really, really makes me feel uncomfortable and awful and, and challenged and scared. Scared, I'm yeah. really, really fearful because it feels like when that happens, it's over. Right, and yeah. then when he walks away because he needs time, that gap gets bigger and bigger, and I get more and more scared. And yeah. in the moment, I, I don't manage myself well, yeah. and I and I pursue. Yeah. You know, I have quite literally put my little five foot five frame in yeah. a doorway to try and stop my six foot tall partner yeah. from leaving. Yeah, and that's that's not okay. Well, it's not okay for me mm. to physically restrict his capacity yes. to move freely in the world. Yes. And I'm doing it out of fear. I'm terrified. Yeah. But I've also done that too, Dee. I've done mm. that too in a past relationship. Mm. And it came from that exact understanding of when I was a child, not understanding conflict, yeah. that mm. I just had to resolve it right then and there. Yes. So the feeling inside of me would just go away. Mm. Well, this is where I want to share. Do you guys know about the three fighting styles? Nope. Yeah, so it's said that there are only three fighting styles. You're either a Viking, a peacemaker, or a samurai. Oh. So the Viking is the person who comes from the family where everything is out on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's an issue, 
We're talking about it right now. We get into the bottom of it, and that's just that. Everybody's business is out, and, and that's the Viking. That's having a Viking style. Then there's the samurai. Now, you know, samurai's got a sword. Yeah. And so um, the, the samurai's strategy is I'll give you little cuts with little snide comments oh. every now so and like then. So like cutting remarks. Mm -hmm. So you can die a slow, painful death. Oh, lovely. Oh. That's a samurai. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That's a samurai. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then lastly is the peacemaker. And mm. that's the person who just goes into avoidance of what the actual issue is in the scenario. And that person's just like, no, everything's fine. Or sometimes the peacemaker, peacemaker can even show up as um, somebody who goes into avoidance. So still acknowledging the problem, still saying, yeah, okay, there's definitely an issue there and we'll talk about it. But later. And then never talks about yeah, it. Yeah, right. So that can also be a peacemaker, somebody mm. who's avoiding that conflict. Yeah. Mm. What's your fighting style, do you reckon? I don't cool. know. I'm a Viking for sure. Yeah. Like total Viking. Yeah. Mm. I feel like I'm a cross between a peacemaker and a Viking because I go, okay, let's talk about it and yeah. let's do it peacefully. Yeah, right. You know, let's not let's not get aggressive about it. Let's yeah. not dig up too much, but let's let's get to the the core of it and yes. let's take own our both our parts mm. and then move past it. Yes. So so I just want to check. How does your Viking show up? Give me an example of that. Oh my God, the Viking shows up when I feel like I'm pushed and I'm pushed and mm. I'm pushed. The defense yeah. comes up. How? So the defense comes up. So the first feeling I get is defensive. The second but feeling I get, angry, so then you're defensive. defensive, which is I'm gonna have to, I have to guard my position, yeah. right? The second thing is my tone changes. So I'm like, you will not, and I'm like, <laughs> wow. Your but, voice changed just then. Yeah, totally. So there is this whole different sort of persona that Hong kicks in. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Which, yeah, is wow. the, which is the taekwondo yes. and the fighter yeah. and the one that knows how to defend herself. Yes. And that comes really into practiced conflict. as well, right? Oh, it's been my whole life. So yes. I've, I really have had to learn how to master yeah. the defender. Yeah, and I've seen you do that. Mm. I've seen you disarm someone with a smile. Yeah. Like you've really mastered that now. Yeah. It's yeah, still, absolutely. It's still a choice. It's it been a journey. Is a <laughs> <laughs> it's been a journey. But yes, the more I got to know myself yeah. and my style yeah. and how I am in conflict, yeah. the better I was at dealing with conflict. Mm. What type of fighter are you? Well, I think it depends on who it is that I'm fighting with. Yes. Because I've definitely taken the peacemaker avoidance route yes. lots and lots and lots of times. Yeah. I've cut people out of my life because yeah. I didn't want to deal with the drama and conflict that showed up when they were in my life. And yeah. that's not necessarily a good thing, yeah. you know, because nothing got resolved. Yeah. But it also is like a bit of a, you know, my dance space, your dance space kind well, of thing, well, you know. Well, hang like, on a minute, because I saw a very spirited yeah. debate happen well, between the why, two of you. This is why it depends on who it is. So, so right? just go into that really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, were, we were talking about something that we both feel very passionately about, right? Yeah. And I disagreed vehemently yeah. <laughs> with yeah. what Soraya said, right? Yeah. And I really like kind of, there was a, I definitely like shut her down for a moment yeah. and you handled that beautifully, by the way, you just refused to be shut down. And the, the conversation <laughs> yeah. kept going, right? Yeah. And where it actually went was somewhere really, really lovely. We came to an end point where we agreed with each other, but yes. man, it got really spirited for a little while yes. there. Loud and boisterous and like, no this and yes, yes. that and uh, 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 both of us. And the more that Deanna pulled away, uh -huh. the more I leaned in and I was like, no, yeah. you're gonna listen to me. <laughs> no, this is my point. So, oh, Deanna. <laughs> so that was an example, for me, that showed an example yeah. of how you guys handle conflict. Yeah, but what yeah. was even more interesting was Natalie's yeah. reaction. She freaked out. In the corner. I was rocking. rocking. <laughs> <laughs> because for Natalie, it looked like an argument. Yeah. yeah. But that wasn't our feeling. No, I didn't feel we that. Didn't that feel but that's that. because of the way that she sees yeah. uh, conflict, right? Yes. Yeah. So that, that shows me all of the different fighting styles, mm. um, how everybody looks at this from a completely different lens. Mm. What about you? What's your fighting style? Um, so I like to take the high road, but my high road can turn into avoidance. Yes. So if I'm having conflict with you and I feel like you're coming on too strong, uh, it's too much, because I grew up around a lot of violence mm. in Africa, that's my backstory, I chose that that was never going to be my life. Mm. And so anytime I see conflict and it's around me or towards me, I'm like, nah. I'm out. Right. But 
then nothing gets resolved. Yeah, totally. Nothing gets resolved. Yeah. Um, for someone who's only just become aware of their fighting style mm. through this conversation, and they've just gone, right, um, I'm a peacemaker. I'm a peacemaker like Deanna, and when my partner runs away, I stress. What would you say to her should be her first step to sort of start her journey on trying to navigate conflict? Okay, so I can only talk about this from what it's been yes. like for me trying yes. to manage this. And what I basically had to do was just be freaking uncomfortable yeah. and, and give the person that I'm arguing with, so in this case it's my partner, as yeah. much space as he needs mm. to get himself into a state where we can then have a conversation about it. And it's never as bad as my brain is telling me in the yeah. moment, ever, 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 okay. ever as bad. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is pause. Yes. Just pause. Pause. But also I, have to, I had to be okay with feeling like a big bag of poop. Yeah. While I was pausing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it wasn't like facts. pause and feel lovely. That's like there facts. was none of that at all. Yes. It's pause and feel like I'm sitting in a big bath of disgustingness. Absolutely. What about you, Soraya? Viking. There's a Viking who's just seen your style and gone, I'm Soraya. Yeah, yeah, totally. So if you are a Viking, please listen. <laughs> <laughs> it will help immensely. So through my experience, I've learned that the Viking doesn't really get the great result. Yeah. Um, so what I've learned is to observe because the, the Viking comes from defense and yes. passion and let's Love do it. this. So Love what it. I did was I learned to just sit back and not take offense, not feel personally attacked yeah. and listen to what it is they're actually saying. Observe yeah. what is it they actually want Love that. and mm. respond. Love that. Nice. Mm. Very and mature. Very mature. And, and for the mixture, <laughs> for the woman who's a mixture of a few of them, I don't know, for me, I always really just want to own my part in it because obviously the issue's been raised for a reason. So I'll look in, at my part of it and then I'll try to feel into what they're trying to say. And I usually feel like when somebody has conflict yeah. with me, that what they're feeling is very simple. I feel unsupported, I feel unloved, yeah. I feel um, rejected, I feel these simple things. So I'll say, okay, what's my part in creating that feeling for them? Yeah. And I'll say, I want to own my part in that, yeah. so let's discuss it. Right. And it's become very organic now. Yeah. Do you know what I love? I love that because a lot of people see fighting as someone's right and someone's yes. wrong. Yes. And totally. that is so not yeah. what it is. Yeah. 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 Because I think at the base of every argument, of every fight, is something's not right here and I want to figure that out. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, my loves. For yeah, having this great. this conversation, I've awesome. loved it. Yeah. It's been awesome. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Until next time.